You want to build a toggle button that lets you switch between two states? Well, the solution might not be as straightforward as you might expect it to be, because any solution that you find on the internet either involves custom visuals or overlapping images or buttons that you then switch in between with bookmarks. Well, can we also just do it with one native button? Well, of course you can. Let me show you how. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, let's dive in straight away and see how we can build a toggle button. Now, the toggle button lets us switch between two states that we can capture with bookmarks. So let's start by first adding a bookmark. Okay, so let's go here to the top to view, and then we go to bookmarks. I open the bookmarks panel. Now, here we can simply click on that, and we have our first bookmark. And this first bookmark is going to be for our toggle on state. All right. And then later on, we of course also need a bookmark for toggle off. So let's create that one as well straight away. So over here, double click, and then rename it to toggle off. Okay. So now we have two bookmarks. Now, the next thing that we can do is insert a bookmark navigator. So if we go here to insert, then buttons, and then here we have the navigator buttons. And here at the bottom, we find bookmark navigator. And here we have our navigator with two buttons, one for the on state and one for the off state. However, with a real toggle, it shouldn't matter where you click on that button, the state should change. And here it does matter where you click. So therefore, we cannot do it with two buttons. We should actually have only one button showing here. Now, how can we achieve that? Let's go to the formatting options for the bookmark navigator, and then all the way down to bookmarks. And from this dropdown, we can choose the bookmarks for which we want to have buttons in the bookmark navigator. However, it just says all. Well, how can we then choose here just a few of the bookmarks that we need for this navigator? Because for our purposes, we just need one. Well, for that, we need to work with groups. So let's go here to the bookmarks panel. And then here for toggle on, I want to place it in a separate group. But you see, it's grayed out. You first have to click on the toggle on bookmark, then click on the three dots. And you see, now we can click on group. All right, so we place this bookmark in a separate group. So over here, we can rename that group to, let's say, toggle. And now that we place the toggle on bookmark in a separate group, we can go back to the formatting options and then bookmarks. And then here from the drop down, there you see we have now the toggle group. Now, sometimes this group doesn't show up straight away in the drop down, then just hide the panel, show the panel, and then it should show. If it still doesn't show, insert a new bookmark navigator and it will be there. Now, let's click here on the toggle group and then here also make sure to allow deselection. And here we want to launch on deselection toggle off so that we have the two states toggle on when we click the button for the first time. And then when we click the button, the same button second time, then, well, the bookmark for toggle off gets triggered. So the most important part for this toggle button is actually already done. It lets us toggle between two states. However, it doesn't really look like a toggle button just yet. We need this little circle that jumps from the left to the right and the other way around. Now, how can we achieve that? Well, for that, we need to go back over here on the right hand side. Now, the first thing that I want to change here is that what shows on the button is not the text toggle on, but a circle. Now, what shows on the button is determined by the bookmark name. So let's go to the bookmark name. And instead of toggle on, we're going to replace this with a unicard character that looks like a circle. Now, where can you find it? Well, just do a simple Google search and it gets you to websites like this one. And here I have a character that I like that I'm going to copy over. But of course, you can be creative and also try out different characters. But for this one, let's first start off with a normal circle. I'm going to copy it over and I'm going to rename toggle on to, well, that circle. That's it. You see now on the button, we have a little circle popping up. Well, the next thing that we can do is play around with the formatting. So let's go here to format style. And here we have all these different states. Now, just make sure that you start with the default state. And for the default state, I want to have that circle, well, a little bit bigger. So let's 
increase the size to maybe 26. And then I want that circle to be on the left hand side. So here for the horizontal alignment, choose to the left. And the next thing that we need to do is to, well, change the shape, the overall shape of the button. So let's go here to shape and then choose something different. You can go for a bell or rounded rectangle. And then here, the rounded corners, I'm just gonna put up to let's say 50%. And then we can also change the overall size. So let's go to general, properties, and then here for the height, let's go for 75 and the width 125. Now in reality, I probably would go a little bit smaller than this. However, I want you to see exactly what I'm doing. So I make this toggle just a bit bigger than usual. All right, now let's go back to the visual formatting options over here. And then again, go here to style, and then we go all the way down and we go to border. And by adding a border here, we can squeeze the rest of the visualization so that it comes closer to the circle. Now let me show you what I mean. If we put here a width of let's say 10, you see, we get the black area in the back a little bit smaller. And we just keep on going up and up until the top and the bottom are a little bit above and below the circle. Okay, so here I'm going to put it to, let's say, 80. But while we are doing this, you see that the circle goes outside of the black area behind it, which is not what we want. We want to keep it inside. So to push it back in, we can go here to text, and then here, make sure horizontal alignment is to the left. And then we add a little bit of padding. For example, we can add, let's say, a padding of 10. You see, jumps back in. Now you see also that the circle might not be perfectly centered in the middle. So we have to push it a little bit up. So let's put a little bit padding from the bottom, for example, five or maybe four. So just play around with it until it looks good like this. And that's it. And you see if we have now something that looks much more like a toggle button. However, we're not entirely there just yet. We have to make sure that it looks good in every state with the colors that we want. Okay, now here for the default state, I want to go maybe for gray. All right, so I'm going to choose a different fill color and choose here a light gray. And then here for the border, we leave it to white. That's important. Okay, and then we go to a different state. So I'm going to switch here to selected. And then for the selected state, we want to have maybe a green color. So let's go here to fill, open this up and go for green. Now here for the selected state, you see the border still white. Okay. And then for the text, well, we want to have the horizontal alignment to the right. Then we have to change the padding, of course. So on the left hand side, it's going to be zero. And now we're going to put the 10 pixels on the right hand side the same as we had before on the left hand side. Okay, good. So we have now all of the formatting options for the selected state. And that's it, let's try it out. Let's go here to the button, hold the control key, click on it. And this is how it looks like in the default state. And you see hmm, our circle changed to black, which is actually not what I wanted to have. So let's go back to the formatting options, change over here the state to default. Then here you see for the font color, somehow I accidentally chose black. Well, that needs to be white. Okay, now let's try it again. Let's hold the control key, click on it. Now it's on, now it's off, on, off, on, off. Perfect, we have our toggle. So once you have your toggle, of course you want to connect it with some kind of functionality where you have two states that you capture with a bookmark. Okay, now let's just try one example. I'm going to copy this over to a different page where I already created this chart over here. And here you see the sales for different channels using the small multiples feature. And what I wanna do is switch between two states and one of them is relatively new from the November 22 version. So let's try that one out. Let's go here to formatting and then Y axis. And then here you see scale to fit. That one is new. Now before it was always the case that uh, the Y axis is in sync between all of the small multiples. However, now they can also get their own Y axis like this and scale them differently from one another. Okay, and I want to have the ability to switch back and forth. However, here I can only do that as the developer. The end user cannot do that, which is of course very annoying. So we can use, however, bookmarks to switch between two visualizations, one where we have scale to fit on and one where we don't have that. Okay, so. Let's try that out.
Okay, so let's build that. I'm going to turn for the first one, scale to fit off. So that's this one. And right next to it, I still have to paste that toggle button that we created before. For now, I'm just going to put it here in the top right corner. Okay. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take the visual, control C, and then click somewhere else, control V to paste. So we have two overlapping visuals, as you see. Now, then what also helps us is if we go here to view, selection, then here you see we have two times total sales and we have the bookmark navigator. The bookmark navigator at the end needs to overlap the other two visualizations. That's important. And the two visualizations that we have here, we just need to make sure that they're nicely aligned. So align to the left and align to the top. Perfect. And of course, they already had the same dimensions. Now, the next thing that we need to do is take one of them. Let's take this one here, then go to formatting. And then here we can go to the y-axis and make sure that scale to fit is on. Okay, so for one it's on and for the other one it's off. Okay, and now we just need to hide one of them. So let's hide this one over here. And you see now the y-axis are synced and with the other one, the y-axis are not synced. So let's say this needs to be my toggle off state. And when I turn it on, then the axis gets synced. Okay, now to capture that state, we need the bookmarks that we created before. We just need to update them. So let's go here to the bookmark section. And here you need to make sure that you have the check marks in front of the right places. So first of all, we don't need to capture the data state. So that one I'm going to turn off. Then the current page we also don't need. And here, selected visuals, I want to have it for. And that's basically it. So you see over here, we have now only check mark for display and selected visuals. Okay. Now, then for toggle off, we're going to do exactly the same. So no check mark for data, no check mark for current page, and a check mark for selected visuals. Okay. And that's it. So now we have exactly the same for the two bookmarks. However, then we still need to update them which we can do by using that selection pane, only select those visualizations. Then we go here to the bookmark. And here you see I switch to toggle on. And then I want to show the other one. So I want to show this state, both are selected, go to the toggle on bookmark, update. Okay, and then we switch the other way around. So I'm going to show the other one. Now we have the axis not in sync. And here for the bookmark navigator, that one needs to be turned off then, right? So I need that other state. Then again, make sure that all three are selected, go to toggle off and update the bookmark. Okay, and then try them out. Click on the toggle on bookmark, looks like this. Click on the toggle off bookmark, looks like this. And that's it. All right, and now we can also try it from the report. So hold the control key, click on your toggle button, Toggle on, toggle off, toggle on, toggle off. So we did it. We created a toggle button with just one normal native button instead of overlapping images, overlapping buttons, or using custom visualizations. And now it's time to get creative and start playing around with the Unicar character and the different formatting options that we used and come up with something like this or this. Now let me know what you came up with and share it in the comment section below. Now, if you like that last example to switch between synced and not synced axes, but you don't want to have these overlapping visualizations, well then check out this video over here. If you want to dive in a little bit deeper into the whole design topic, then check out this video here. And if you have any questions, just share it in the comment section below. I want to thank you for watching and see you in the next video.